Hey, what's going on everyone? My name is Nick and today I'm going to help you build a solid foundation in Tinkercad. This beginner friendly tutorial will take you step by step through the basics of Tinkercad from setting up your workspace to mastering the essential tools and features. Whether you're brand new to 3D design or you want to fine tune your skills, this guide is designed to make learning fun, easy and efficient. But that's not all. Stick around until the end for a must watch bonus tips section where I'll share eight essential tricks that most beginner tutorials don't teach. These tips will save you time, eliminate frustration, and set you up for success as you start exploring the world of 3D modeling. Let's dive in and unlock the full potential of Tinkercad, so grab a cold one and let's get started. Let's quickly go over the basics of the interface. The first thing we need to do is set up our workspace. Down here in the bottom right corner, click on the settings button. Now we're only going to make two changes here. One is purely my preference, but let's change the background color to a dark gray. It makes it a little bit easier on the eyes. Next we want to make sure our work plane is the same size as our printer build plate. I'm using bamboo P1s and A1s so I'll set this to 256 by 256. Units are already set to millimeters, just make sure of that and hit make default. Then click the close settings button. Let's quickly familiarize ourselves with the controls of the interface. Left click and drag lets you make a selection around multiple objects. The right click mouse button rotates the work plane and pressing down on the middle mouse pans around your view. Lastly, the scroll mouse zooms in and out. These are all pretty standard controls. Next, over here on the left hand side, I call this the icon menu. This view cube right here will control your preset views. Moving your mouse around the different areas of the cube will highlight it in blue. If you want to quickly go to the top view, click right here and the work plane will rotate to the top. Now using these little arrows around the view cube will quickly rotate your particular preset view. You can explore the rest of the features that the cube has, but I particularly don't use it very often. Just below the view cube is the home view. This is your standard home view similar to many other Slicer software programs. Right below that is the fill all view button. Shortcut F on the keyboard. This will move your camera out to make sure that all your objects are in view in the work plane. Let me pull two objects out to show you real quick. Also, if you want to center your camera at a specific object, you can select that object and hit the F on the keyboard and your camera will center into that view. Next are your zoom in and out buttons, similar to the mouse scroll. Lastly, you can switch from orthographic to perspective view. If you watch my Bamboo Studio beginner tutorial, I talk about these two views. Orthographic view will give you a more realistic view, and the perspective view looks like an FPS game that tends to distort your view. I always use an orthographic view. All right, let's go ahead and move on to the fun stuff. Now the way that Tinkercad works is that it's an add and subtract modeling tool. Meaning we'll be adding primitive objects to our work plane and using negative or whole H O L E objects to subtract from our model. This menu on the right is where you'll be working most of the time. You can collapse it from your view using this button right here. Now all the primitives are broken up into different categories. We have basic shapes, design starters, vehicles and machines, and a bunch more. I think you should definitely spend some more time exploring all of these. Let's go ahead and add our first object. Click on the cylinder right here and drag it to the work plane. A new window will appear. This window controls this particular object. Just note that the settings will change from object to object. Right now, it's being used as a solid object. If you click on this button right here, you can change the object color and transparency value. If you click this whole button right here, it will change it from being a solid object to a negative object, meaning it will be used to cut into another object. You can adjust the number of sides by sliding this widget here. Also, if you click on the number here, it will allow you to manually enter a new value. Now I do want to note that using the cylinder primitive and increasing the size to 64 is still not going to give you a perfect circular model. I'll go ahead and discuss this more later on. Next up is the bevel. Sliding this to the right, you can see that this will bevel both the top and the bottom. The segments tool will break the object into a number of segments that you set. Right up here, you can click this lock tool and it will lock the object down and not allow you to move it anymore. This light bulb icon will hide the object from your view. Now the way we get it to display again is right here by clicking this bold button. If you want to make a copy of your object, you can either press the control C and control V to copy and paste, or by clicking on your object and holding down on the alt key and dragging to make a clone. You can delete the object by clicking on it and hitting the delete key on the keyboard. Next, let's talk about all the controls in the work plane. When you have your object highlighted, you will see four white squares around each corner and the top. These will allow you to freehand scale your object. Now, if you hold the shift key down on the keyboard, you can scale uniformly towards whichever box you're clicking and dragging on. You can use the black solid squares to scale your model as well. 
Clicking and dragging will scale your model in the direction of whichever square you pull on. Holding down on the shift button will uniformly scale your model as well. Additionally, holding down both the shift and the alt will scale from the center of the object. I'm going to delete the cylinder and drag in a box. The way you rotate your object is by moving your mouse over one of the half moon shaped arrows. The rotate wheel will be displayed. Now you have two options. You can incrementally rotate your object by using the inner wheel. Simply leave the mouse on the inside of the circle and drag it. It will snap to every 22 and a half degrees. Now move your mouse to the outside of the rotate wheel. You will notice if you move your mouse around, you will get a more precise rotation. Before you let go of the mouse button, if you hold down shift, the rotate wheel will change. And you will now see that your rotation will be locked to a 45 degree angle. Next up is the move tool. Moving your object along the plane is super easy. Just click and drag to move it around. Now to move it up and down, you need to use this small black arrow. You can use it to move both up and down. Once you let go, it will stay at that level and you can move it around at that level. Real quick, let's undo using the Ctrl Z and go back. I wanted to point something out. When moving your object up and down along the Z axis, you'll notice that these little measuring tips show up. Those are telling you how much you're moving your object in millimeters. Since we're moving it up and down, it's only displaying the one measuring tip. But if you click on and move your object around, it will display two measuring tips, showing you how much you're moving along the X and Y axis. You can click inside those boxes and type in an amount that you would like to move. Let's type five and hit enter. Now you have moved it by a value rather than dragging it. This also goes for all the other tools, scale and rotate as well. Super important feature to remember. Tinkercad will snap your object in reference to the snap grid settings down here. You can adjust this for more precise movements by changing the value by turning it off completely. For now, let's just leave it at one millimeter. Before we move on, I would like you to notice that the box menu is different from the cylinder menu. You can use these to change the shape of your box as well. Some of the objects will change the view window once you drag them to the work plane. Take the scribble object for example. Once you drag it over, it will change the view to top view to allow you to draw your shape. Once done, the preview window will update you and you can hit done and go back. I won't go into details of this, but just be aware that many of the objects have special features such as the scribble tool. Once you start building your models, it may be handy to place down a ruler. Use the R key on the keyboard to place it anywhere on the work plane to get a relevant distance of your objects. The work plane tool is a pretty awesome feature as well. Once clicking on that, you will get a tool that looks like this. Hovering over your objects, it will snap to that object surface. Once you click it, it will change the view to allow you to make a reference from the new work plane. Once you're done with your object adjustment, you can go back by clicking the work plane tool again and clicking anywhere in the view area. Let's go ahead and make a few complex objects so you can get a feel for how Tinkercad works. Let's select two objects on the work plane and group them. You can do that either by clicking and dragging a box over both of them or by clicking on the object holding the shift key on the keyboard and clicking on the other object. Once they're both selected, you can group them together by clicking this button right here. Now let's go ahead and ungroup them real quick. Click this button right here to ungroup them. I'm gonna move the cylinder here and move it to intersect the box. Now select both objects and hit the group button again. We now have a complex shape and you can see that both of the objects are the same color. Let's take this one step further and cut a hole into both of them. I'm going to bring in another cylinder, resize it, and rotate it and turn it into a whole object. Now I'll position the object so that it's going through both objects. Once that's done, I'll select all three objects and hit the group button. Immediately, you'll see the whole object disappear and cut a hole into our complex shape. Now let's say you want to make an adjustment. Just click on your complex object and hit ungroup. Shortcut is Control shift g now make your adjustment, select all three objects, and hit group again. When I first started using Tinkercad years ago, I thought it was a really simple yet effective way to quickly create complex models for 3D printing, and is exactly why I'm showing you this today. Oh, and if you're wondering how we save our work, no need to. Tinkercad saves it as you build. Also, if you would like to give your project a name, you can do that by clicking here and renaming it. All right, before we wrap up, I wanted to share something extra with you, a bonus section packed with eight must-have tips to make your Tinkercad experience smoother and more enjoyable. These are the kind of tips I wish I'd known when I first started, and they'll save you a ton of time and frustration as you learn the ropes. 
So stick around because these tips might just make all the difference in your 3D modeling journey. All right, first up, the duplicate and repeat tool is just awesome. The way this tool works, click on your object that you would like to copy. Hit the duplicate and repeat button, then adjust your duplicated object by rotating and moving it. As long as you don't click off of your object, you can continue to duplicate and repeat or use the shortcut Control D. With this tool, you can create some awesome, intricate designs in a short period of time. Let's go ahead and talk about the work plane for a moment because I quickly went over it earlier. Let me go ahead and show you some real world uses for this. Let's say you want to place some text on the side of an object. Well, you would first place your text down, rotate it, and move it into place, right? Well, with the work plane tool, that makes it 10 times faster. Click on the work plane button, place the work plane button on the side of the object where you want to place your text. Now you can just drag the text directly on the surface of your object. Let's go ahead and explore another way to use the work plane tool that may not seem so obvious. If you'd like to connect two objects from end to end, such as these two cylinders, select the work plane tool, click on the circular side of your cylinder, then select the other cylinder and move it towards each other. Once the position indicator reaches zero, you now have two cylinders that are touching end to end. Similar to how the work plane tool works with meeting two objects together, there's a tool called the cruise tool. This will allow you to take an object and using the cruise tool, once activated, it will slide along any other object surface, allowing you to quickly place an object onto another. When you're looking to move your object in a straight line, you can lock it on the X and Y direction by holding down the shift key. Now your object will only move side to side and forward and back on the X and Y axis. I also wanted to mention that you can move your object by using the left and right up and down arrow keys on the keyboard as well. Just remember, it's always going to move in increments set to the settings down here. Mine is currently set to one millimeter, so every click moves the object in that direction by one millimeter. If you want to be more precise, then you can change that to a 0.1 millimeter. I would also like to mention that using the arrow keys will move it in the X and Y axis, but if you hold down the control button on the keyboard, it will allow you to move in the Z axis up and down. You can increase your movements by simply holding down the shift key. This will move your object by 10 increments instead of the standard one. All right, moving on, I wanted to show you the difference between adjusting an object using the freehand tools in the work plane and adjusting using the shape parameters. If I pull out a box and resize it to a rectangle, then using the radius tool to give it some rounded edges, you'll notice that the radius becomes distorted and not all what I was expecting. Now, if I take that same box and resize it using the shape parameters field, let's say 50 by 100, you'll see that the results are much better. Now you may be wondering, why is that? Well, if you see this object I use the shape parameters now has the modified sizes right here. But if we switch over and click on the object that I manually resized, it doesn't have the shape parameters. I'm not sure exactly why Tinkercad works like this, but if you're experiencing an issue similar to this, then always check the shape parameters. Next is one of the most important tools to understand in Tinkercad. There comes a time in almost every single project that you need to align two objects with each other. Let me place down a couple of primitives. Okay, now I have a rectangle and a whole cylinder. What I would like to do is align the cylinder with the rectangle. First select both objects and hit the align button. Now you see some lines with some black dots on the ends of them. The great thing about this tool is that it helps by showing you an outline of what's going to be moved and where before you click on the dot. As you can see, if I hover over this dot, it will move this shape to an outline transparent position. And if I click, you can see that move happen. Let's go ahead and undo. Now what I want to do is move the cylinder to the edge of the rectangle. If I highlight this and click it, now the cylinder is aligned with the side of the rectangle. Then if I wanted to make any adjustments, you can click on the cylinder, hold down shift and freehand move with your mouse and lock it into one axis. Spend some time with this align tool and it will definitely come in handy with most of your projects. Now earlier in this tutorial, I mentioned that I wanted to talk about low resolution objects. If you notice when pulling in the cylinder primitive, the object doesn't look completely smooth. Well, you can go ahead and increase the sides to the maximum of 64. This will give you a better result, but as you increase the size of the object, let's say to something similar to the entire workspace, you will begin to see hard edges. The great thing about Tinkercad is it has a gallery section that allows you to find high resolution objects. A quick Google search of the keyword high resolution cylinder Tinkercad gives me a link directly to what I need. You can do this with pretty much any shape you need. Just swap out the name of the primitive. You can also get the same results by clicking on the search here and typing in high resolution. 
I hope this tutorial has helped you take the first steps into the world of 3D modeling, but this is just the beginning. In the next video of our Tinkercad training series, I'll show you how to design your very first 3D printable product, something you can create yourself and even sell. I've carefully chosen a product that almost every household in this country could use, so I'm excited to share it with you. If you have any Tinkercad tips or tricks, I'd love to hear them. Drop them in the comments below. Once again, my name is Nick. Have a fantastic day and happy modeling.